Good morning, everyone. Um, in this video, I thought we'd explore another common task that we have as developers quite often, and it's simply checking the existence, testing the existence of a file. You know, before trying to launch a file, open a file, you know, whether any type of automation, Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, whatever you're looking at, um, it's always a good practice to first test and make sure that the required file actually exists and is in the location that you expected it to be, that it's actually there. Um, and this can avoid errors. It also allows you to trap such problems and report, you know, a nice cordial uh, message to your user going, hey, I can't locate this file. Please ensure it's in this location before trying again type of situation. So per the usual, I have an article on the subject. And in this article, I'm providing two possible approaches. First is pure VBA using the DIR function. And the second one is using the file system object FSO and using the obviously and properly named file exists method. Uh, both will give you the same result at the end of the day. Uh, the choice is yours. Um, However, if you do a lot of handling of the file system, then it becomes interesting to create a file system object, keep it in memory, obviously. Um, so we're talking about self-healing object variables if you're going to go that route. And then you can just keep calling upon it whenever you need it. If this is a one-off situation, then the deer is a perfectly viable solution. Now let's dive in. Let's take a look at what all of this is, how this works, how we put it together and how we actually use the two uh, code samples I've provided. Before going any further, let me present myself. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Daniel Pino and I'm a longtime Microsoft Access MVP. And um, yeah, let's dive into determining if a file exists using VBA. So as I said, we're going to start off by uh, using uh, one of two methods. We're going to start with the DIR function. Um, so let's start off first by creating a blank database. Let's do this from scratch. So file exist. And as you can see, I've placed a file on my desktop. It doesn't make a difference. But for our testing purposes, we can use that guy. So I'm going to open this up. Uh, the code I'm providing today, by the way, will work in any VBA environment. This is not something that is access specific. So you can easily employ either of these approaches in Excel, in Word, etc. Your choice. So open the database, clear the error that begins. Okay, so let's switch into the VBA programming environment, the VBE. So Alt F11 or Control G, whatever you prefer. Uh, let's see here. There we go. And I'm just going to simply add a module. Now you can do and name it however you'd like, but I often do files and folders will make sense to me. Um, and then you simply go to the website and you can grab the function itself. Okay, let's quickly take a look at the function. It is very simple. I'm using the DIR function, like I said, in combination with the length. So I'm going to see if it actually returns a value. Because if it returns a value based on the file I'm looking for, so therefore the length is greater than zero, therefore it would be true. If it doesn't return a length, so I've got a length of zero, this will be false, so it doesn't exist. So we can simply test the presence of the file by whether or not DIR returns a value, returns a string. If you look at the actual documentation, you'll see here it returns a string representing the name of the file, blah, 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 that you're searching for. Um, let's just test it out here quickly in the immediate window. Um, so, uh, what are we doing? Users, Daniel, I think, desktop. Um, test.png. So that's how we'd use the dir command to begin with. And as you can see, it returns the actual file name. If we put an, a file that I know isn't on my desktop, 
and I run it, you'll see it returns nothing. And that's why we're able to use the length to determine whether or not the file exists. And that's all we're doing. It's a very, very simple function. So with this known to use it, we could then therefore come and do, well, here, let's just replace it here. We can do this, right? So it should return false, which it does. And if we're testing a file I know exists on my desktop, then it returns true. So now if we come back here uh, to the actual documentation, you can come here and you can do things like what I demonstrate in the usage examples. So we could come here, create a sub test, just copy paste the code from my site. And now you can do whatever you'd like. Let's say we do a debug.print. The file exists. And we could then do else the file does not exist. So now we can come. Let's clear this out of the way. And we can run it knowing that tests exist, the file exists. And if we put a file name that doesn't, we can then run it per se, and it says it does not exist. So obviously above here in your own code, normally you'd have some type of routine that gets file names, could be an array of files, could be something the user has specified in a text box, a dropdown, whatever. And then you'd simply pass that value here to perform your test. And then you can use an if statement and else if you need to accordingly act and uh, respond back properly to the user, return a nice message to them in the cases where it doesn't exist, where you expected it to exist. So very simple to use, really not complex code. And the documentation, like I say, is available for, for you to peruse and explore a little bit further. Um, just a side mention here, you know, I'm using it here to test and see if a file exists. The DIR function can also be used to iterate through a folder to retrieve the name of all the files within a folder, etc. Um, I wouldn't use it recursively. There are major issues with that. You're much better off using FSO for recursive directory searches, but for a single folder search, um, DIR works great for that as well. Let's create another one, another module. We'll come here, mod, I'll just call it FSO. And let's save this guy, that's fine. So if we go back to the article, just scroll down a bit, and now we'll copy the code for the FSO example. Now we can come here and look at the code. Now, what is this, what is all this code? Well, per my usual self, I like to use conditional compilation to provide the best of both worlds. So in this instance, all of this here is to dictate whether we're going to use early bindings and we have IntelliSense, so that's great for development purposes, or if we're going to use late binding, which is great for when you deploy it in the wild in production to avoid versioning issues amongst other things. If you're in a very controlled environment, then early binding can work even in production. But I typically, anything I release to my users, I'm always using late binding. How do you distinguish the two? It's very simple. Whenever you see create object, you know you're dealing with late binding. Whenever you see things like new, you're dealing with early binding which requires a reference to a library to it for it to work. If you come up here, oh, I, yeah, um, and I did not indicate it here, I will have to do so. Um, but when you're in the FSO early binding, you need to specify a reference to the, uh, let me put it here so you can actually see it on screen. Um, so we could maybe put it here, ref, Let's say Microsoft scripting runtime. So how is this controlled? All of this is controlled by an if here, FSO early bind. So if FSO is set to be early binding, 
So you come here and you look, FSO early bind is false. So what does that tell me? It tells me quite simply that if this is set to true, then we're using early binding. If it's set to false, then we're using late binding. That's why typically I'm always using late binding. Okay, so basically, depending on what you set here, it's going to run this or it's going to run this. It doesn't run both. So it just allows the computer to know which version we're using, and then it's going to complain or not if you have the proper reference library, the Microsoft scripting defined or not. Um, and then it's a single line. We're lucky in FSO. There already is a function available to us. File exists. And once again, I will point you uh, to the, sorry, method, um, point you to the documentation, but it's really simple. Returns true if the file exists, returns false if it does not, self-explanatory. So we simply use that here and push back the result from that. So it really is very simple. The bulk of the code is actually just differentiating early binding and late binding. So we have the both best world available to us as users and developers. Um, and then just simple, you know, house cleaning at the end of it, or error handler, which you should always have. And that's it. Um, now, I have once again here an example, but to make our lives simpler, we can retake this guy here. And we just have to update the name of the function to be run. So now instead of using the DIR version, we'll use the FSO version. And it's the exact same thing. So if we come here and run it, the file does not exist. That's perfect. And if we come and use the name of a file that we know exists, you can see it works perfectly fine. One thing I will also mention to you at this point, like I had said previously, if you're going to use the FSO approach, make sure you get into looking into self-healing object variables. Okay. I have an article on it. I'll include a link to it. But basically what it allows you to do, if we come and look at that section here for FSO, you're able to take this bit of code, okay, put it into your module. And what it's doing now is it's giving you a variable, an OFSO variable, which will stay reside in memory. Okay, so let me show you how this works. What you do is now you don't need any of this in your function because it's being taken care of above, okay? It's going to take care of it. It knows if it's early binding or late, and it does what it needs to do. And then here, you're able to still use the OFSO because that's what we're replacing. So instead of defining it locally in your procedure, now we're doing it above. But the beauty here, if we look at the code, is it's going to come here and it's going to look, does it already exist? If it doesn't exist, then it creates it. But if it already exists, it doesn't go through the tedious task of creating or doing a new file system object because it's already in memory. So from a performance standpoint, this is a tremendous improvement. Um, the more you use calls to OFSO, the more you're saving. Obviously, if this is a one-off, you're not going to see the benefit. But if you're doing a lot of file system checks, whether it be files, folders, creating files and folders, all these types of things, if you're doing a lot of that, then this type of approach will save you performance-wise and time-wise. Um, and as you can see, it simplifies your code tremendously. And then what happens, you just run it and you'll see it ran and I have a debug statement to show you that the first time it runs, it actually has to do the setting process. But if we run it a second time, you'll see it no longer performs the setting because it's in memory. And if you use specialized timers, you'll see there is a benefit from this approach. It's a well-known uh, thing to do to try to improve performance. And that's why I have a whole article dedicated and I even have a video on the subject and you can use it for much more than just FSO. As I show here, uh, you can use self-healing object variables on a whole slew of variables that are quite common in programming. So this is a great thing to learn if you're not already aware of it. And lastly, but not least, just since we briefly touched upon uh, FSO, 
Um, just that I do have another very detailed article on the subject, which covers a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, drive, you can use FSO to check things with uh, disk drives, files, folders, text streams, and I have other advanced uh, usage examples. Like I say, this is quite extensive. I give a whole bunch of functions that you can just literally copy and drop into your uh, solutions, regardless if it's Access, Excel, Word, and be up and running instantaneously. I've already done the hard work for you. I provide links to the documentation if you want to look some of this stuff up. But as you can see here, all, all the different uh, functions that you can possibly need are already all here for you, available to be copy and pasted and used. So I'm going to stop there. Um, but today, like I say, uh, just wanted to cover two very simple functions that you can drop into place in a matter of seconds and be operational to check and see if a file that you require exists before trying to use it. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for spending a couple minutes of your day with me. And we will see you in the next video. Take care and have a great day.